I think we'll call, call a meeting to order. I know a lot of you have important conversations with coffee in a roll, or, but, uh, and it's not Tammy's birthday, so I think we just better get going here, huh? So, Mary, are you coming? Oh, you're eventually here, huh? Okay, any introductions we need to make today? Any new members? Okay. Dave Carl's roots, glad he found his agenda and came here on time rather than at 11, which he would have been an hour late, so. Uh. <laughs> okay, do we need to do roll call first, Lisa? Is that right? Bill Sloss? Bill Sloss? Bill Sloss? Bill Sloss? Bill Sloss? Bill Sloss? I can see you on there, Levon. Here. Good. Monsack? Yep, here. Carlsrud? Here. Erdman? Here. Johnson? Here. Mahoney? Here. Nielsen? Schmaltz? Or Breidenbach? Okay. Schmidt? Schmidt? Mark Pritchard is here this morning in Mr. Schmidt's place. Oh, okay, Mark. And Veen? Here. Okay. Um, Dale? Very good. We need our associate oh, members. Mark, I forgot them. Dale, Stephen Dale. Dick Johnson. And Carol Siegert. Okay. We have a quorum. Very good. Uh, I need a motion to approve the order of agenda and we are adding uh, at your slot so you have a resolution that we're going to put forth to the legislative body. So if you'd kindly look at your uh, handouts. Uh, did we send it all electronically too? We haven't sent it electronically, but I Okay, and I apologize for those that are online, but we just have a resolution uh, and it's basically trying to endorse the 2% 40-year loan. So we'll send that out to all the members who are online. So I need an a, a approval of the agenda, adding the resolution as part of the agenda. So move. I'll move. second. LeVon. <laughs> Good. We got enough people doing it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Good. We have the reading minutes, uh, February 5th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Mm. Moved and seconded. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Officer report. Ken, do you have something to report on us today? You usually have something. I, but I just you move your mic a little closer so those on, on the screen can hear. I got it. Okay. No, I think everything that I have is covered later on, so I'm okay. Okay. Al Glasser, are you there, Glasser? I, I am I here. Do you have a report for us I, today? I do, Mayor Mahoney, members of the of the board. Uh, the technical advisory committee uh, met via virtual conference uh, on March fourth, and we conducted our business that day. Uh, some of the things we we got some updates uh, from Kip and from Mary relative to the construction projects that's going on uh, out there on, on the site. Uh, gave us some pictures. I think you've got some of those in your packet today. I always like pictures. They're, uh, they're always cool to look at, see what's going on. Um, construction seems to be going well. Uh, Mary talked, gave an update on some of the budget uh, items and some of the discussions that they're uh, actually now doing, uh, meeting with some of the individual uh, water water suppliers or users. The actual we did uh, consider a couple of task orders for to send on to the board for for action. The first one had to do with the transmission pipeline. This is a construction contract, and 
Remember that uh, the pipeline project is about a mile and a half of 72 inch steel pipe. And there's also uh, an underground trenchless crossing uh, of a railroad track. So uh, that's what that contract is that has already been awarded, but we need to get, make sure we get the uh, site inspections and, and things like that done on the engineering side. So that particular uh, contract uh, would be in the amount of uh, $868,145. And the committee did uh, recommend that for approval. The second one that we also considered for action was on the Cheyenne River outfall, the discharge and site development. This is also a construction services contract. Uh, if you remember, this is the out outfall structures near the Cheyenne River. This particular part of the contract is, is mainly the concrete structure itself. Um, pretty simple, if not large. Um, so it's almost all concrete work. That's, that's the part that we're doing in the early out. The cost of this particular task order would be $193,000. And the committee is recommending approval of that also. At, at the time the committee met, the bids were just being opened. And uh, I think bids have been opened. That's, that's in your packet here today. Uh, got good bids. And so that's always nice to see. So those are the two action items. Uh, in addition, we did get an update on the design, final design for the Missouri uh, River uh, tunnel and, and screens. Um, interestingly enough, the Missouri River continues to have shifting sandbars, and uh, we have discovered, or it's not a brand new discovery, but, but there's been some sand shifting that would actually impact where our, our intake structure would be on the river. Uh, this probably ends, ends up being a good thing because I think it, it brought to light some design changes that we might need to uh, incorporate in, uh, in, in the intake uh, structure itself. Uh, and additionally, the engineers, as they've been sharpening their pencils, have actually come up with a, a new concept design for, for the intake itself, uh, which I think is going to be a big cost savings relative to the the large, if you remember, the original structure was a, a pretty large concrete box, essentially, out in the river, uh, and and uh, would have been pretty expensive to uh, to construct. Uh, I'll let Kip go over some of the, the details if you if you're interested. But it's it's a again the the new design is much simpler. The additional item that they're going to look at is 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 make being able to make some adjustments to the heights of the intake screens maybe the number of screens. Again, this is kind of a result of uh, some of the shifting sandbars and it bring, brought to our attention some needed design uh, elements. Um, Mr. Chair, that's my report to the committee uh, any, or the, the board. If there's any questions, uh, I'll take a shot at answering them. Any questions by any members? Do we, Mary, do we need to do an action on this or? Mr. Chairman, yes, we'll have to um, have um, an action on the construction services for the transmission pipeline and the outfall. So, so I don't know. I if could take that in one motion, a motion to approve both items. I think that we probably okay. could. Do I have a motion to approve item A and B? Green, is there a second? Second. Bowen fact. Thank you. Any discussion? I think all the bids are very uh, nice to see. We're a little concerned about on the diversion, how the construction bids will come in, but it was nice to see them under the engineer's estimate. So it's nice to have part of that happen. Roll call vote, please. It is. I, I think we're under a good bidding environment right now. Good. Ready? Uh, roll call vote, please. Eltoff? Yes. Bigwood? Aye. Bonsack? Aye. Carlsrud? Aye. Erdman? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. 
Nielsen? <coughs> Breidenbach? Pritchard? Aye. Vian? Aye. Motion's carried. Very good. And Kip Kovar, I think you're uh, off site today, going to give us a report. Uh, Dwayne's happy you're not making him sick, so thank you for not coming into the meeting. Uh, you're going to start here on the Cheyenne River Outlet and site development. Yeah, good morning, um, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for letting me do this virtually. I have a good old fashioned cold, so I thought it'd be best if I just stayed here today. Um, I do have a work plan update prior to before we get into the discharge, if that's okay. That'd be fine. Okay. My report is on page starts on page 61. And I also brought some uh, construction photos with today. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. Kip, when you say 61, which tab is that? Oh, sorry, that is tab D. There we go. Can you see my screen, Mary? Yes. We can okay. see it. Okay. Um, so Dwayne got this photo for us. This is just an example of a secant wall uh, wet well. So you can see these individual, there's individual secants in here, basically just cylinder concrete columns. And so I just wanted to give you... Um, an actual view of what we're what we're trying to build. This on the left hand of your screen, there's a plan view of the secant uh, installation. Every other secant has a reinforced I beam in it. On the right hand of your screen is a profile. Um, that wet well is about seventy feet deep. At the bottom of the wet well, there'll be a five foot concrete plug. Is my screen changing for you guys? Yeah. Okay, so here's the, the template for the secant work. Um, here is ICS and Michael's on site. They have a couple of cranes, um, some drill rigs, mobilized. On the left hand of your screen, you could see they're starting to drop in the I-beam into this secant. On the right hand is a finished secant. So there's concrete poured in the cylinder and this I-beam is in the center that goes down about 70 feet. And just one more site picture. Um, it's gotten pretty muddy there as the snow melted, but uh, things are looking good. They've had a few bumps along the way. They did install a secant or two without the reinforcement bar, so they had to go back in and drill one out. Um, another secant that uh, they were supposed to remove the reinforcement so the tunnel boring machine could go in. There was another screw up on that one. Other than those two items, everything's been going well. There is a total of 40 secants to be installed, and I think they're at about 23 or 24 right now installed. They are anticipating um, all the secants will be done by April 1st. So that's good. And then after that, then they'll start excavating out uh, in the middle here. As far as uh, Al did a good job of talking about the uh, screens and tunnel, we're about 90% done with the designs. Those will be done in April. We'll be ready to bid the screens and tunnel by June. Moving over to the pipeline, um, we did award the pipeline project to Garney. We are having a pre-construction meeting March 17th. Verbally, we're kind of hearing that they'll probably mobilize June timeframe, starting with the tunnel underneath the railroad and the highway. And then kind of July, August, we would get the first string of pipe to work on the open trench portion. Any questions with the construction update? 
Mr. Chairman, is it okay then if I move into the uh, discharge bid opening? Yep, that would be fine. So we open bids March 4th at 2 o'clock for the discharge structure and site development. I believe it's in your board books on tab E. We received six bids ranging from 1.5 million up to uh, $2 million. The engineer's estimate was 1.93 million. The low bid is industrial builders. The engineer's recommendation, I believe is a handout, Lisa, correct? Correct. So if you can hand that out or maybe it's already been handed out. I've already. The engineers are recommending. Right. They are recommending we um, award the contract to industrial builders, and then I believe also in the handout uh, for your information is the notice of award, the notice to proceed, and I believe the general contract that would be issued to industrial builders. They have if it all in front of them. Yep. Okay. So if there's any questions, I could take questions. Um, if not, then we would be looking for um, a motion to award the contract to industrial builders for $1,516,955. Do I have a motion? Girls, Rude, move. Is there a second? I'll second it. This is Mark. Okay, thank you, Mark. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Eltoff? Yes. Bigwood? Yes. Bonsack? Yes. Carlsrud? All right. Erdman? Yes. Johnson? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Breidenbach? Richard? Aye. Ian? Aye. Motion's carried. Now, Kip, do we have to do a motion on notice to proceed as well? Yes. So I'd take a motion. Yes. i take a motion for that as well. I'll make the motion. Accept. Is there a second? I'll second. take the second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Eltoff? Yes. Bigwood? Aye. Bonsack? Yes. Carlsrud? Aye. Erdman? Yes. Johnson? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Breidenbach? Pritchard? Aye. Ian. Aye. Motion's carried. Kip, any other business? Mr. Chairman, that concludes my stuff. Thank you. Mary, you're up for program schedule. Sure. Um, if you'd please turn to tab H in your books. Um, this is our new simplified program schedule. Um, as, as you're aware, the previous ones were kind of talking about the contingencies we had to meet in Senate Bill 20. 2020 from last session and now that we've done that and we've started our, um, our early out construction we focused it much more on construction schedules so you'll see in there for the early out projects for the intake wet well the anticipated dates of construction same with the transmission pipeline and the Cheyenne River outfall and discharge so those are all for the construction schedules and then the next major engineering thing that they are working on is the screen structure and tunnel for the Missouri River intake and you'll see the um, anticipated, if everything goes right, the engineering team will be ready to bid that, but we have to have the financing and the funding. But as long as everything goes right there, you'll see the anticipated construction schedule. I'm gonna point out one thing that this isn't the most updated construction schedule I've found out, but um, now that they're redesigning or redoing the screens and tunnel structure to a, a different type of um, 
smaller design and they know with the Missouri River intake permit, um, we're actually looking at July or August of 2022 that that construction could be completed. Kip, did I have the dates right? Yes, okay. you got it right. So yeah. yes, we, we're showing 2023, that is the old schedule. So as long as everything goes right, we can bid um, what's shown on here. It'll actually be that we could be done with construction in summer of 2022 to tighten that up with those permits. And I think that Green. that's the good news because we can get the project done within the, the permit that we have for the for the intake, right? Within yeah. the time, which is great because it, it, we were concerned before it was going to go beyond, even though we have the ability to have the additional request, the additional one year extension we can do now is what I'm hearing within the within the timeline. I, I would say that we'd be very close because right now without the one year extension, it's March of 2022. So this is still a little bit after that, but well within before uh, that one yeah, year extension would be. Months. Okay. Yes. Next item is uh, your planning level budget. Okay, if you'd please turn to tab G. This is um, our planning level budget. Um, previously, we had a couple of different budgets that we were showing you and we're trying to put everything into one. This is as of the end of February. Just gonna point out that everything that's up in yellow is what has been completed. So we have the conceptual design, the preliminary design, um, the phase final design that's been completed along with the financial admin and land acquisition. So we're showing um, subtotal for completed is $23.4 million. Then in blue is actually the phased final engineering that we're currently working on, land acquisition and the financial and administrative. And with our, our phased efforts that are ongoing, we're at 83% complete. Um, we have an estimate of 7.8 million on that. We've expended 6.5. And then moving on down into the green is the 2019-21 biennium funding, and that's what the State Water Commission has recently approved for us, um, starting in October all the way through February. And that's um, more of the engineering task orders that are working on. Um, if it says upcoming, that means that we've been approved cost share from the State Water Commission, but we haven't actually approved those task orders. And that effort is at 3.7 million. We have 402,000 that we've expended. And then down in orange is everything that we have ongoing for the construction. Um, I'll point out for the discharge structure, we thought that it was going to be more, so we um, have the construction contract at 2.2 million. I will go ahead and revise that now that we have the $1.5 million contract. So total for everything, we have a, we're about 58% with everything that we're working on, $53.7 million budget, we've expended $31 million. And then down below in the white box just shows where all of the funding is going to come from. I'm going to state, if you look at the very bottom, it shows that we have a little bit of a budget shortfall of 540000 and that really has to do with when we approved and the garrison diversion approved and said that they would pay for it, is when we had to do that Missouri River geotechnical work before we were able to get State Water Commission funding, and we weren't awarded State Water Commission funding. So if we continue to come in a little under budget on everything, I don't have to worry about that shortfall. Good to know. Any questions by members? Okay. Tab H. Sure. Um, if you go to tab H, we just wanted to kind of show how the um, State Water Commission funding is going. Um, you'll see that we have carrying over from our early out construction where we always thought that we'd have a 90-10 cost share, and then the new funding was at 75-25. Construction costs came in a little bit more, so it's kind of being intermingled there. One thing that I'll state is, um, so the State Water Commission has approved 19,150,000, requires a local cost share of 3.4 million, so we have a $22 million budget. And then I talked a little bit about the shortfall there, but things are coming a little bit under, so I don't think that we have to worry about that shortfall. But just so everybody knows what we have been awarded from the State Water Commission to date. Very good. Central North Dakota Water Supply, State of Missouri, Wasu, Tammy Norgard, to tell us what's happening. Sure. Uh, well, 
The briefing schedule has been delayed again. That's the only real development. Um, if you recall, Missouri was supposed to have their brief due November 22nd, and our brief was due in early January. Missouri extended their deadlines or asked for an extension due to COVID and some other things. Um, so our deadline got moved back to last week that we were supposed to have our brief. And now the Department of Justice attorneys asked if they could have another three weeks to do the briefing. So at this point, our briefs are due March 30th. There will be approximately a month for reply briefs. And then it should, I assume, go to the court uh, for a hearing scheduled probably sometime in May. Any questions? Canada has not spoke up as well, right? That's correct. Okay. Legislative update, Mary, what do you got? Good news, they're working well together out there, everything's great. So um, I think it's good news. I think things are going um, pretty well for us. Um, I'll state that in 1020, which is the State Water Commission budget, that um, you know we've gone from crossover, so the House had that. And right now we're hearing that there's $30 million in there for Red River Valley Water Supply Project. Um, the new revenue forecast is coming out next week, so I think once they have that revenue forecast, the Senate will take a look at that and adjust as needed. We have requested 50 million, so I think for Red River, we'll be in there anywhere between 30 and 50 million. I do think that'll go up a little bit more from 30 million, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, there's two other bills that we're working on, and that's to do with the local financing. We know that that's a really important part of financing this project for locals. And we've been requesting the 40-year 2% loan. And there, there's two different bills that, um, that has parts of in it. And I do think that there will be some amendments for those bills. And one is in 2014. And I um, testified on that yesterday and asked for a couple of amendments. We'll see how that goes through House Appropriations. Um, I, I think that they listened and they were writing notes. So hopefully they will make those amendments. And the other bill is 1425. And we were asking for the same amendments in that. And I do know that one of the senators right now is actually working on those amendments. I've seen those amendments. So hopefully they'll carry it through. Um, they're kind of joint bills. So if we get it in one, it, it will be really good. But we're trying to get it in both of them. And we're halfway. So um, I think really, really good news. We see some changes going. Um, as I've always talked about, is contacting. We might do a few call to actions as these financing bills come through and ask for maybe some to come and testify or um, submit online testimony or just even email your local legislators. Very good. Any questions? Financial report? All right. So that will be on to tab I. This is Lake Agassiz's 2021 budget. Um, as you remember that you approved a 2021 budget for income, total income expected was 2.6 million. So far to date, you uh, received 32,000. And then the balance of the budget is 2.5 million. Um, most of that financing will come in through the um, interim cost share agreements to the local cost share for the construction. Um, expenses, you have an expense budget of $2.6 million, actually expended $7,890 7 million, $7,890, I talk in millions too much, um, showing that you have an expense budget of $2.6 million left. Um, down at the bottom, beginning bank balance in Lake Agassiz's bank account, you had $644,000. After you add the funds re income received, you had total funds available of 677,000. Um, after the bills paid of $7,890 on February 28th, Lake Agassiz had 669,000 available in their bank. And Mr. Chairman, auditors always like if they know that the boards have seen this and approved the um, analysis statement. So we want to approve it? Please. Do you have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second. Very good. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Eltoff? Yes. Bigwood? Aye. Bonsack? Yes. Carlsrud? Aye. Erdman? Yes. 
Johnson. Aye. Mahoney. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Reidenbach. Richard. Aye. Meehan. Aye. Motion's carried. Very good. Mary, bills paid. All right, so tab J are the bills that have been paid since you've last met. Um, one is the Water Coalition dues, the North Dakota Water Users dues, um, which last meeting you approved um, being members of both of those entities, and then the um, bill for Onstead Twitchell as well. You need a motion? We do, please. Can I have a motion to approve? So move. Is there a Full second? Fact. Is there a second? Can be in seconds. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Eltoff? Yes. Bigwood? Aye. Bonsack? Yes. Carlsrud? Aye. Erdman? Yes. Johnson? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Reidenbach? Pritchard? Aye. Ian? Motion's carried. You uh, unfinished business. We have user meetings that Mary Meridian and Steve Burian have been doing. You want to tell us about how yeah, those have been going? Yeah, I sure can. So um, the Red River team that you have outgoing is myself, um, Steve Burian. Wayne has been attending them, and Sean Gaddy as well. We've held seven meetings so far with um, 10 different systems, and then we've also had um, local communities that didn't actually sign up that are within regions. Um, we've had mayors and council members come and um, attend those. I would say that we probably have another 10 meetings scheduled, so we are on the road a lot um, meeting with those. Um, out of those, I'll state that we're kind of given the direction that we're not asking for money right now, but we're always supposed to ask if we had a thumbs up, um, neutral, or thumbs down. Um, we've had, out of the 10 systems, three that are a thumbs up. One we're gonna call neutral plus. They weren't quite a thumbs up, but they're a little more than just neutral. Um, we've had four that are neutral, and then two that just kind of preferred not to say at this point that they just wanted more um, information. And then I'll state that where we've been able to, we've had a Lake Agassi board member um, come and join us. Um, some of them, it's actually been their own system. Last night we met with Jamestown and Stutzman Rural Water and Dave Carlsrud um, came and represented as a Lake Agassi board member. Now are you saying some of them had sticker shock when they saw the amount of money you're talking? Um, I, I think that some of them, it, we know that it's a very expensive project. Some of those that aren't on the river and how they'd get that main tran that branch pipeline to them um, is, is quite expensive for them and trying to figure out how we'd actually serve them through branch pipelines. Very good. Um, we've told them all that we'll probably be back out after the legislative session, after we know what kind of funding we have and um, what the project was awarded to come back around and start talking more and then really start dialing in on branch pipelines, how we'd be able to serve those other systems. Well, I know when I talk to Bruce Scrub, when you see the ability to do a 40-year loan at 2%, makes it much more affordable for the systems. Otherwise, you would have to have huge utility bill increases to handle or cover the cost. So it'll be critical to do that. Uh, John Chocke, you're also looking at another funding mechanism with a rural uh, group. Would you want to explain that a little bit, too? Yeah, at, at the re request of the... Alawa leadership and working with uh, A2S have been looking at different funding options that would be in addition or supplemental to the state funding. Uh, I think at this point it's important to have backup plans for financing if the state doesn't quite come through or if they have a limited cap on their funding ability. So, for example, if the state said you can borrow up to 100 million, we still have to figure out how to finance the rest. So. Uh, still working on that. Should have more updates in the upcoming meetings. Thank you. And then I think Mayor Carlsrud, you're working on some Biden money. Your town might have some money to loan us, or what do you think? <laughs> Very good. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I could, in those user presentations that we've had so far, um, we have a pre we went all the way down to now where we show the capital costs. We show their share of the capital cost based on a 40-year 2% loan like you referred to. 
we show their share of the baseline operating, their share of the renewal and rehabilitation, and their share of the drought operating. The one thing that we've had consistently with every meeting we've had is they really want to see if once we start construction here and we ramp up to what that total cost would be, how that implementation is going to go over 10 years. And so I think the next thing we'll have to do once we get the legislative dollars is take those eventual expends and then show some kind of assumed construction schedule and phase in, you know, note tranches, fence in, um, phase in interim operating costs because they really want to know before they get a drop of water how much money they're going to have to contribute. But otherwise, I think we've been able to answer all their questions. Very good. Any questions of the group? And then I believe our other unfinished business, oh, excuse me, Charles Road. Just uh, one question from last night. Uh, who will perform the O&M? And, and uh, we didn't know. Yeah, so last night we were asked on the branch pipelines who will perform the operations. Of and I said, I didn't know that answer, and I needed to go back to the team to talk about that. I know on the main transmission pipeline, Garrison Diversion will do that. But once we get out to the branch pipelines, who would perform the operations and maintenance? So that was a really good question. I didn't have any of the engineering team in the room with us, so I um, highlighted that, that that is a, a next one to talk about that. I don't know, and, and Kip's on the call, I don't know if it has been thought that Garrison Diversion would do the operations and maintenance on the branch pipelines or not. So that was, that was a, a question that I didn't have an answer to last night. So would that go to Al Grasser's team or would that go to the finance team? I, that would be more of a technical um, question, definitely more of a technical question with the engineering team. Steve's coming to the mic, so I think he's got an answer here. I don't know that's an answer, Mr. Chairman, but I know for the Western Area Water Supply Authority where they had a central system and then they had a bunch of branches that went all over the place and they had established users, rather than recreating wheel, the wheel, one of the things they used was a hybrid where WASA maintained the, ma the main transmission lines, but as they got into the more air, the pipelines within service areas, they pay them to operate those components and it takes advantage of the people you have out in the field. And so as we look at this, I think we want to be um, open-minded and creative as we look at our approach for things. Very good. Any other comments or questions? Our other uh, new business would be our resolution that was handed out, and it's basically saying our Red River Water, water Supply would uh, be very much in favor of 40-year loan with 2% interest, and therefore it's resolved from a board of directors that we uh, express support for that as a long-term low-interest loan and local cost share. One of the difficulties we have with some of the legislative discussion is it starts at 2% and then goes up 1% after five years, and another 1% finally gets to 5% with the idea that you're going to refinance some other method. But it appears to us that for this to be viable on a local level, it should be a 2% for 40 years that would most work well for most areas. Uh, even on John's rural health or rural funding, it's at, at two, just over 2%. So anything that gets us to that. Uh, uh, Representative Schmidt was relaying it to a cost of his pickup and a cost of his skid loader, and he pays a percentage on one or the other, and what could that be? And I said, we're not talking about a skid loader. We're talking about water supply. So we'll see if he <laughs> changes his mind a little bit, but I hope he enjoys his pickup. Um, <laughs> So that's the only thing we have to uh, endorse this resolution. So I would take a motion for to endorse the resolution. Is there a second? Any discussion? Mayor Erdman, I see you smiling. Do you have some advice for us on which one I should pay off? That's good loader or pickup? Yeah, right. Well, we can all buy a pickup with 0% interest, and the skid loader, of course, would be more like 4 or 5, but uh, <laughs> let's just go with the water supply project, like you said, and let's forget about skid loaders and pickups. <laughs> Very good. Roll call vote. Elta? Yes. Bigwood? Aye. Bonsack? Yes. Carlsrud? Aye. 
Erdman? Yes. Johnson? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. Nielsen? Reidenbach? Pritchard? Aye. Bean? Aye. Motion's carried. Mary, we have any other business? If that's everything that we have, and I'll just apologize to those online that you didn't get the resolution, but we will definitely get it emailed to you. Kim is on it. She has emailed it to you. Bruce Krupp. Just an announcement, a change in meeting location for Garrison that meets after the Lawa board. You will be in the Meadowlark room on the second floor of City Hall rather than the River Room. So Meadowlark room, second floor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to say that what's going on here today in all of these meetings, this is historic stuff for the state of North Dakota. I hope you all realize that. This is establishing uh, water for the Red River Valley, for Grand Forks, for Fargo. It's also establishing the use of the Missouri River water running through our state. Um, and it, this is vitally important to everything that is going on in the state of North Dakota. So I want to thank you all very much for the work that's being done. Thank you. And how long have you been tracking this, Al? How many years? <laughs> 20? Well, more than that. I started on this water stuff in 1986, so it's wow. been a while. But this is important, extremely important stuff for the state of North Dakota. So. Well, for you, those of you Zooming, you can't take a donut at home, but there's some donuts left here for those of us that are here. Might have an early lunch or something like that. Uh, thank you very much. Very efficient meeting today. Appreciate that. Uh, we'd stand adjourned unless there's no other business. Thank you.